let's see if we can get this done before the sun sets. <laughs> okay, she's a big one. Where do I film? The top or the bottom? Well, the action is going to be on the bottom, so we'll focus on that. For now, I'll just stick to the bottom part and say hi. Oh dear, here we go. Hello. <laughs> I have a stuck tag. All right. Guatemalensis. Big, big, big girl. And totally, totally pot bound. It was only an intermediate solution until the orchid had established herself. But now she has established herself. There is no way she can stay in this pot. She needs to be bumped up into her forever pot. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be either painful or pretty straightforward. And I would like to see the latter happen. And in order to make it less painful for her, I had her soaking in calcium magnesium at 300 parts per million because she's enormous and a good, good doses of 100 parts per million of seaweed. Sorry, already getting ahead of myself, feeling for old and dead roots. The idea is not to clean her up. The point here is to just pot her up into a larger pot and pretend nothing ever happened, seeing as she is a bifoliate. But she is enormous, heavy. I can't squeeze. Let's go. Oh, maybe we'll pour out a little bit of the lecker first. You see, if I have to clean her up today before finishing, because finish I will, and if I have to switch on the lamps and torches and everything to get this done, if sunset happens before that, then so be it. But I've been waiting a long time to do this, and I don't want to wait any longer. If the growing season starts, as the temperatures at night are now coming up to 15 degrees Celsius. Hooray! I want to have this done and move on to the next projects that are in line with other orchids that need to be dealt with so that their growing season will be a success as well. The only reason I waited with this one was so for so long was because of the night temperatures. I wanted them to adapt. So I just have some surface roots here that I'm trying to dislodge from the outer edge of the pot. She is enormous. I have to watch that her leaves don't keep scratching the mic. Now my idea as well is not to give her too much of a make over, but I do need to get her out of the pot. If I can avoid the hammer or maybe not. But I do want to have my pot back in one piece. She is a very wobbly plant because she has been cut from a division, but also another cut is made here. Now, if that falls apart, I don't mind because she will stay together based on the fact that she has created her own little support by the root system. So I don't have to worry too much if she does fall apart at that joint that was previously cut. And I'm not waiting for her to bloom. I can feel something in the sheaths but I'm not here now to wait for her to bloom before addressing this. This has to be addressed. And the blooms, if they come, great. And if not, then at least I will feel much better that this has been dealt with. And I'm gonna need a nice shower after this one. The sun, I'm telling you, has, when you're standing in the shade, there's still a little bit of a, you know, a bite in the air, a bit of a chill. But like this in the sun with no breeze, Ooh, wearing black, that's something. Okay.
hang, you know you want to. The thing with bifoliates is you should do this only when you've got new root growth. Because <laughs> they will dump their roots. They will protest. So I'm just hoping that potting her up is all that's going to take to just keep her going and not have her dump her roots. I don't even want to maneuver or fandangle the support out. Just want the orchid out of her pot. Support and all. And we did it. Make sure that you still have a view. That's all I want to see right here and now. Is there any, oh my goodness, you know me. If there is a cleanup to be done. Uh, I don't want to do this. Hmm. I think it's best though, just to give her a good start. It's not going to be a full on cleanup, but yeah. Yeah, there are some dead roots. Right, this was not the plan. Okay, Guatemalenses, it's now a question of you or me, but these are all the dead roots here that were in the pot when she came and arrived with the media being bark. And she grew new roots. Then, when I was repotting her, she had just started her nubbins. But these strand bits here, these long strand bits, they were there. They looked to be viable while I was repotting her and situating her into Lekka. But they are the ones that are gone now and I'm okay seeing them go. If I could see, if, I, if it was the new roots that were causing problems, then I would be more concerned. But this is good. I'm okay with this. But again, I don't want to make this a major operation. I don't want the support to come out. I want everything to be as it is and just clean up as best as I can with what I can see. You can see I'm not even respecting the leka underneath with an extra bowl for debris because for me, this is about potting her up and not doing the full cleanup. But this, I can't leave her in the pot like this because she is going into a massive pot next for the next couple of years. And I do want the climate to be as healthy as possible for that extended period of time. So my Lekka cleanup is going to be another one of those. A bit of a nightmare sometimes. But it's going to be better than the nightmare that this orchid would experience if I left her with these roots failing dead in the middle for the next two years. The reason I'm bumping her up into such a big pot is because of her vigor. Her rhizome grows long. Her roots are big and chunky. So that's why I'm kind of trying to plan ahead constructively. Okay. Well, seeing as the gardener is going to make a lot of noise tomorrow, I've got plenty of time to fiddle, fiddle around with this Lekka in the kitchen tomorrow. When he's around on days like these, when the climate is changing like this, he's a busy man. And he comes with all his kit and caboodle and makes a lot of noise. Mingi kilele. And then filming is, well, it doesn't get really very productive. I can film during his lunch hour. But if I see a project like this, and I do that on a day that is his lunch hour, we are going to collide with our time. Because his lunch hour is one hour, and sometimes I need four. You see all these roots here? Oh, I really want to get rid of them. I do, I do. So I'm going to have to slow down and just make sure that I stick to my plan as best as possible. Except the fact that I do have some maintenance to do. And not just plonk her up into the bigger pot, but do as little damage to the roots that are there at this point. Always being mindful that she is a bifoliate. But also wanting to be mindful of the next two years.
Let's wet her down. All right, let's prepare the pot. I still have the calcium magnesium here. The roots are saturated, so it's not like there's gonna be much action, but at least it keeps them wet. Let's check how low she's gonna go. Okay, that's fine. Fill her up. <laughs> Just had to laugh myself with my little cups. I'm saying we're going to be here all day. I did want to get done before sunset, so I have a little lecker scoop thing that I made from a detergent bottle. And my collection hasn't grown that large that I need to fill massive pots like this on an individual basis. So I've never actually used it, but this is my little contraption gizmo and it works. I made holes at the bottom so it drains and I can scoop out large amounts of lecker. <laughs> there we go, we've just inaugurated that one. My plan is to put her bang in the middle just because of her growth habit. There's no point pointing that in the corner if the next growth comes from here, I'm messed up. So. No, she's got to be bang in the middle. Just like that. All right. Let's position the lecker now with the microfiber. I normally make a loop, but in this case, that's silly. So the strands are straight up and fed through the lecker. Just straight up and then down into the reservoir. So the idea is the wicking is in increased up to more the higher part of the pot. Okay, let's see. Let's make a little bit of a hollow. I don't want her that high. I want to be able to play with the height a little bit more, as opposed to being stuck with the height once I have her in the pot. So I'm just gonna remove a little bit because in the process of raising her up, I can get lecker underneath that root ball. Okay, try again. In the middle. And this will give me two years. Stay. 
Now I'm not 100% happy with this. She is too high for my liking, but I'm not going to intervene again because she is a bifoliate. And this is not new roots that I'm dealing with here. These are all established roots. There was not a single growing root tip happening. So ideally, I would have liked her to have about two fingers deeper in the pot so that her little upright, she's not a climber, but you can see by this rhizome here, this one, you see how it sort of has like a up and down and, you know, kind of growth habit. I would have preferred to have had that in the pot if, as I'm thinking two more years, but it is what it is. I'm not going to interfere with her now, probably not for the next two years, unless I see something radical happening and she comes climbing out of the pot at a fun funky, funky height. You see the next growth that would might be here, you know, could come up and I didn't want her this high. But for now, I'm just going to leave her. There was more happening at her root ball than I was happy with. There was more to clean up than I thought. And I didn't want to just plonk her back, even though she's going into a big, massive inorganic. I didn't want to just play with that fact and leave all the debris that I saw in the middle here for another two years. So. This is now hoping that all goes well and that she does have the space for the next two years and not climb out of the pot. Because that would be a shame. That was not the point of the exercise. We'll just have to wait and see. And then we'll just put the label back in and she'll be done. And I did pour the calcium magnesium that I soaked her in back into the pot, into the reservoir. She has had her fill. I don't need to worry about watering her for several days, maybe even two weeks now. She's got plenty going on in that pot. My word. There we go. What a monster. That is now from a 20 centimeter pot into a 27 centimeter pot. And I'm quite glad we got that done, to be honest. Blooms or not. So thank you ever so much for watching. I hope that you found this somewhat interesting, a little bit of a twist with a, some cleanup. Let's hope she doesn't climb out of the pot. That's not exactly what I need right now. Have a wonderful day, everybody. I appreciate your time very much. Thank you. Please stay safe and take care. Bye.